Yeah, man, it's real heavy. It's real heavy. A lot of the tethers are getting these wake up calls now. A lot of them are getting these wake up calls. Um, that dude, Toby Obamselli, the guy who got killed by the white woman down there in Florida, and this white woman is still walking around, still going to bars, still posting on social media. She's still doing her thing. Um, I posted up something where his brother was explaining. His brother was like, Yeah, I'm. You know, please don't judge my brother for the post he made years ago. You know, we still need justice. Oh, whoop de whoop, we need justice. And by the way, my brother was killed, and the only reason she got away with it is because she's a wealthy white woman. Okay? A lot of folks didn't catch that part of his statement. He put down the reason why this woman was not put in jail is because she's a wealthy white woman. These Negroes still don't get it. Him putting that up there shows that he still doesn't get it. They're still looking for an out. Sitting up here talking about she got a pass because she's a wealthy white woman. Number one, she ain't wealthy. Wealthy people don't do OnlyFans. Okay, this is a white girl who's on OnlyFans doing something strange for change. Wealthy people don't do that. She's not wealthy in any sense of the word. That's them trying to find an out from the racial element of it. That woman got off because she's white. Wealth didn't have anything to do with it. That woman got off for one reason and one reason only. She's white in the system of white supremacy and they get on cold with each other. Your whiteness is the wealth. You're not a wealthy white woman. Your whiteness is the wealth. Whiteness has been monetized. That's something that black people have to understand. Whiteness has monetary value. That's the selling point of white supremacy. That's how they sell it to the dominant society. See, the thing is, white people are getting finessed by rich white people. Rich white people sit here and finesse the poor, working class, and, and broke down white people to support the system of white supremacy to make a small few white families extremely wealthy. And they have to throw a bone to the rank and file white supremacists. Even Lyndon B. Johnson said, hey, you tell the brokest white man that he's better than the, the richest black man, that white man will empty his pockets for you. He was absolutely correct in that. White people get finessed by the upper brass white folks. And the reason why the rank and file white people maintain the system is because the whites on top throw a bone to them by saying, hey, what we'll do, you're not going to get this kind of, you know, material, tangible wealth that we have. But what we'll do, we'll give some of you um, basic privileges and immunity of law. And they're fine with that, meaning if you go out here and commit a lot of crimes, we're not going to criminalize you like we do the black people. So we'll let you just run amok. This is why we've seen so many different cases of white men raping white women left and right and raping people in general and literally getting slaps on the wrist. Every week you hear about some white man who didn't raped a bunch of people and he got probation. So that's part of the bone that they throw to the rank and file white supremacists. You get immunity from law. So if you're out here smoking meth, we're not going to criminalize you. We'll let you smoke your meth. We'll let you commit crimes. This is what, what white supremacy centers, it centers itself around, being able to get away with degenerate behavior. This is a part of their culture, being allowed to get away with the most degenerate behavior ever. You can run up here and try to storm the Capitol building, and we'll just give you a jaywalking ticket. You can be out here molesting kids, raping animals, and we'll, we'll give you probation. You can go out here and kill people. And if it's a black person, you, you'll get a pass. You know, you feared for your life. It was self-defense. So that's the bargain of white supremacy. And they don't want to give that up. Black folks have to understand this. When we always point out the injustices of white supremacy, we, we got to understand this. They understand. They know. Not only do they know, they prefer it. They'll sit here and play dumb. Every white person who's an adult, they know about the non-justice. The name of the game is to gaslight you. This is why black folks have to stop trying to explain racism to the dominant society like they don't know. These are the people who created racism. They know. 
they are very well aware of racism. They are the ones who created it. They are the masters of racism. They understand it fully. Black people are the ones who don't understand it. We got to wake up to the game here. This is why my book, Foundation of Black American Race Beta, my book was designed for black people to understand. That's why the book is so unapologetic. That's why so many people in the dominant society have a problem with it, because usually when black people speak about certain issues, we have to speak to the dominant society. We have to speak to them. We have to filter what we say to make them comfortable. This is why, again, when the dominant society starts targeting black people, black celebrities, a lot of black people get scared and they have to go along to get along, just like with the Bill Cosby thing. A lot of black people in the industry had to turn on Bill Cosby. Why? Because they were afraid of not getting work. Well, all the white supremacists got on code to go against Bill Cosby. And the white people in the Hollywood machine, they all went against Cosby. So black people figured, OK, if I'm working in this industry and I want a job, I have to kind of go along with the lies. Now, I talked to Bill Cosby on the phone a couple of days ago. We had a very good conversation Lovely man, lovely family. His wife was in the background. Very good conversation. He's in great spirits. Still very funny, still very humorous. The joking on the phone. It was a couple a couple of us on the phone. It was me, um, some, uh, some more people that uh, work with him. His lawyer was on the phone. Shout out to Andrew Wyatt. And um, Andrew had to be on the phone because Andrew had to give a disclaimer, had to give a verbal agreement not to take the call and all that. So, you know, they're taking precautions. They're taking safety precautions. So, but we had a great conversation and Mr. Cosby was dropping some very heavy game. He was dropping some very serious game. We started talking about how the media will start targeting black people who promote families. If you start promoting black family structures, if you overtly promote that, you become a target. And even with him, you know, Bill Cosby for years, whatever you want to say about what he did behind the scenes, whatever, which most of the stuff isn't true. But in the media, he used his platforms. Bill has always promoted black families and low key. That was always something that made the, the dominant society somewhat disgruntled. But also we were talking about the thing with the Oscars. We're talking about how with Will Smith, what he did and how they were already looking for a way to undermine Will because, you know, Will just did a movie. He won an Oscar. Look at what he won an Oscar for. He won an Oscar um, about the the Richard Lewis story. Well, not Richard Lewis, Richard Williams. Now, the Richard Williams story is about what? A black family. A black family working together to make the children successful. So that was already something that the dominant society did not want to see. But Will got it to that point. He did that movie. That movie rose up in the ranks and Will messed it up by that slap. And they were looking for that's the very thing they were looking for. They were looking for Will to slip up and Will slipped up. And bam, now they can attack that thing. They can attack the movie. They can attack Will. They can really go out of their way to undermine Will. And basically, they've, they've blacklisted Will because they've already said that Will Smith is banned from the Oscars for 10 years. So you know what that means. So if you're doing a movie out in Hollywood and these people want their movie to have an Oscar consideration and Will is in it, it's not going to be nominated for an Oscar. So a lot of folks are like, well, damn it, we don't want to put Will in our movie. Let's get a, let's get Jamie Foxx and let's get somebody else to put in the movie. So they low key blacklisted Will already. You understand? So we got to understand the game out here. But again, going back to the conversation I had with Mr. Cosby, we had a long conversation, a lengthy conversation. Um, very good dude. Very solid dude. Um, and I'm glad that he avoided being framed by the white supremacist powers that be who tried to put those bogus charges on them. And if you are a black person co-signing those bogus charges, you have to look at yourself. What do you get out of co-signing some bogus nonsense like that? Let's be very real. Stop being a scared Negro going along with everything white people tell you because you're scared. 
we got to cut that scared nonsense out. Every lie they tell you, you got to regurgitate their lies. Let me get some more people in here. Raise your hand, family. We got a lot of folks up in here. Come on. We in here heavy. We are in here heavy, ladies and gentlemen. Raise them hands. Let me see them hands. For those who want to get on here. Leopold, you're not getting on. I don't know why you keep trying to get on in here. You're a self-hating black man who's struggling with your sexual identity, dude. Don't come in here with that. Let's get... um. Um, what's this guy's name? Media Saboteur. I, had, I think I've had you on before. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, first of all, I'm just curious. Is there any white people that, are there any white people that you do like, Tariq? I do. Fair enough. Which ones are they? Name just a couple. I like Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker makes delicious <laughs> foods and treats. Betty Crocker's foods are absolutely delicious. That's one white woman that I can rock with. That's Betty Crocker is the business. Her pot pies are scrumptious. <laughs> but I think she might have stole the recipe from a black woman. Is it, is, but yeah, there's she a stole it from Aunt Jemima, didn't like. she? It was Aunt Jemima. Yes, she did. Yes, yeah. she did. Uh, so, um, so why do you think I, I don't like white people? Well... You have a very interesting, uh, something I wanted to point out to, to you and your audience. You're well aware of it, though, even though you may not think about it much. But uh, mm -hmm. when you use the word suspect, the term suspected white supremacist, it, right. there's an implication that comes with it. And that implication is this, that the suspected white supremacist perhaps is not a white supremacist. So... Uh, That's true. Yeah, I find that I find that interesting, and I wonder what it is exactly that distinguishes, in your mind, between what a white supremacist is or isn't. And uh, moreover, moreover, what it does is it primes your audience to automatically assume that this suspected white supremacist is automatically a white supremacist. Like half your audience, they're just kind of, you know, they're in it for the thrills, so they're automatically going to just assume that so and so is a white supremacist. But well. Well, what's interesting, your community does that, sir, because when they sit up here and shoot and kill innocent black people all the time, they sit here and say that they were suspects. I suspected this person had a gun. I suspected this person was a criminal. I suspected this person was a thief. I suspected this person was going to try to ch take my gun. So your community does that to black people every single day in a deadly form, and they kill black people based on suspicions. So my thing is somebody has to be a white supremacist. We're living in a complete global system of white supremacy. Somebody is maintaining this system. The problem is there's no master list of white supremacists. Exactly. So in many cases, we, ha we have to start assuming and suspecting people of being white supremacists since y'all won't tell us who the white supremacists are. You see how that works? Sort of, yeah, but in a lazy fashion, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know about you. There's no other way to do it, though. I, 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 mean, I, I go by, I'm a, I'm a man of specifics. You know, I'm a former Marine myself, so when I, when I think about targeting people, I want to be very specific about who I'm targeting in general. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just kind of, I just think it's a lazy way out just to, just to kind of throw a blanket over it, kind of. It, it, I mean, it, well, it, it it, it, it's done to black people every day. Yeah. It's, it's done to black people every day. Every day it's done to black people. And, and I, I think that's lazy, but we're suspected of everything. Our blackness makes us suspect. Even with in New York, the stop and frisk thing, we're all suspects in New York and in San Francisco and places like that. So that happens with the dominant society all the time. And this happens to innocent black people. So now we have to suspect some people of being white supremacists because we're being harmed by those in the dominant society. So when we are here interacting with people, I can't sit here and assume that this person is not a racist when this person might be on the phone calling the police saying that I'm a suspect for something that I didn't do. So I have to suspect these people might be white supremacists, so we have to be on our P's and Q's. Unfortunately, that's how it has to be until we figure this racism thing out. All right, well, I can figure the racism thing out for you right here, right now. You, you want to know the answer? I'll give it to your entire audience. What's the answer? Everyone's racist. Everyone. Okay. Literally everyone is racist. You can observe this in toddlers. You can observe this in babies. Everyone is racist. So, but, but there is only one group of white supremacists, and that's not us. Racism 
is white supremacy. There's only one form of racism that dominates and controls the entire planet, and that is white supremacy. There is no black supremacy. By definition, there is nothing even remotely close to black supremacy. You cannot have black supremacy and white supremacy at the same time. I don't know. I don't know. I so, think a lot of your audience might disagree with that. I think there might be more than a few black supremacists in your audience, and I think they'd be self admitted. Okay. Who are, who are they supreme over? I, you would have to ask them. But I guarantee they're here. Okay. No, I can tell you nobody. Black people are not supreme over anybody. But white people are supreme over us because they have an army backing them up. All white people are supreme over us. The the Karen that you see, every Karen video that we see, that Karen is being the Karen because she knows she's in a supreme position. She knows that she has a military to back her up. We do not. They're, hey, they're, right? By the way, these are AWFLs you're describing, and they're as much my enemy as they are yours, believe it or not. Um, they're not exactly. Um, no. Yeah, most for the most part. Yeah, they. Uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> white women care in AWFLs. We are describing, you know, these like blonde hair, blue eyed, middle aged women. Uh, they tend to be. They tend to be very much against my interests, even a lot of the time. But oh, oh no, 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 no. Those white women depend on you to be the enforcement arm of white supremacy. No, no, no. You well, guys work together. You guys are not. <laughs> oh no. When these when these Karens are sitting up here blaming a black person for shoplifting or blaming a black person for yelling at them and they get on the phone they're hoping that a suspected white supremacist male will come through with guns blazing sir they work together they do not have any type of issue with you whatsoever they know that the white male is the enforcement arm of white supremacy so i don't believe i'm not going for that at all look these are the same the same women that i'm describing i think i think we're I don't know. These are the same ones you all brag about banging all the time, you know, like, oh, these are the white women that we bang while you guys are, blah, 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 blah. you know, this is, I think we're thinking. Sir, no, who's bragging about banging white women, sir, I've heard you, except for. I've heard you do it. I've heard you do it on the show. I've heard you, uh, I mean, it's more like you're being snarky when you do it because you have, like, legit race. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm being sarcastic with some of the white supremacist callers. But no, nobody, <clears throat> trust me, it's nobody, it's not a flex to bang a white woman. All right, well. I trust me, it's not. Fair enough. We're not. I just wanted to get your take. We're not going to agree on that part on any. Just, but okay. uh, next thing, though, I just wanted to bring up the uh, Brooklyn subway shooter. Are you aware? Were you aware that he's actually an avid listener of yours? Apparently, no, he's not an avid listener. No, he's not. Hmm. This man, this man tweeted a comedy video that I put out uh, about a decade ago. So that's not an avid listener. This guy follows many prominent people and i just happen to be one of them so he's not an avid listener if he was an avid listener he would have retweeted me more or he would have commented more he's not an avid listener why did you say he was an avid listener it's my understanding he was a pretty avid listener of yours um, Where, your understanding how I, how did you get that understanding i don't know i listen to a lot of smart people like you well, well, you just made it up, sir. You just made yeah. up a narrative that wasn't true. No, I don't think I did. It wasn't an avid listener. But, uh, anyway. And see, now you're being deceptive, sir. That's uh, another no, form of... Oh, come on. I've been see. honest with you when I got... No, I've been honest that with you. That was deception. You no, know, that was deception, sir. And deception is another tactic of the white supremacists. Now, that's why somebody would suspect you of being a white supremacist, sir. I, deception. You were very deceptive. I told you I was to smart people. What's deceptive about that? No, don't. Look. Well, what smart person told you that man was an avid listener when he was not an avid listener of mine? I, I honestly, I heard it in a forum like this one, but with a lot of smart white people mm -hmm. in it. So I okay, so you were listening to you got lies from other white supremacists, basically. <laughs> See, you're the one using white supremacists again. But anyway, I'm not. I don't want to take up any more of your space here. It's a good talk. Good talk. Oh. I'll talk to you later. All, All right. right. All right, sir. The the, the mayonnaise casserole is getting cold. <laughs> Have a good day, sir. All right. See how these people try to slip in lies? See how people try to slip in. They try to be slick and deceptive and slip in lies. Oh, they think they're slick. Let me get Roz from the DMV in here. 